This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, um, we're still on throughput accounting, but um, let me make sure you're clear what we mean by um, a bottleneck resource. And what it is, before we look at the actual example in the notes, just suppose uh, we're making a product which has to go through two processes. Ah, uh, we're making a desk, and perhaps um, the wood goes in. Uh, and the first thing we do is build the desk. Uh, but then, as we build it, as they come out of this process, they then go into another one where we paint the desk. And then it comes out finished. So a simple idea, we just these two processes, two rooms, whatever, build the desk, it comes out of there and we paint it. Now of course there's a limit to the capacity of uh, each process. You know, these are machines, there's a limit to how fast they can go. And suppose I tell you that in this process, where they're building desks, uh, they can deal with uh, 50 units per hour, or let's say per day, they're not that fast. Um, so they can um, build 50 desks a day, and when it comes to painting them, they're capable of dealing with 100 a day. But just think about it. How many finished desks can we actually make per day? Finished. You see, it's all right, they can paint 100 a day, but they can only paint the desks that come in. And since only 50 a day are going into the painting room, I don't care how fast they are at painting, only 50 a day can come out finished. And why? It's because the, the most we can finish per day depends on which of the processes is the slowest. Because building is the slowest at only 50 per day. It doesn't matter, say again, it doesn't matter how fast we are at painting. If we can only build 50 a day, we can only end up with 50 a day actually finished. And in that little example, it's this process which is slowing things down. You know, if that process could be faster, we could produce more. But it's that one that's slowing us down because it can only make 50 a day. And we call it the bottleneck. Uh, the reason it's called a bottleneck is if you think of a bottle of wine or something, ooh, if you come to pour it, the reason it doesn't, the liquid doesn't all come out at once is because it's slowed down by the neck of the bottle. You know, if you have a bottle of water, uh, if it was a great fat neck and you pour it, it'd all come out at once. But because it's only got a, a little neck, it slows things down. Uh, but that's what we talk about with a bottleneck. You see, it could be either way around. I suppose I, I changed it and I said, we could build a hundred units a day. That's how fast that um, uh, process is going. But the painting department, they take longer. They can only deal with 50 a day. Well, again, how many can we produce per day? We can only go as fast as the painting room. Uh, there's, no good, uh, if, there's no good that process building hundred a day because they're just going to pile up and up and up. We'd say, well, because we can only paint 50 a day, then the desk process will have to go slower. They could make 100 a day, but we'll only have to make 50, and only 50 a day will come out. Uh, and again, why? It's because the painting department is slowing everything down. That would be the bottleneck. So I hope that's made sense. When you've got several processes, 
you know, in practice, there could be any number of processes the desk or whatever it was had to go through. Then the overall rate of production will depend on the slowest process. So let's look at how it can be asked. Example three, that is actually uh, an old exam question. So it's the sort of level at which it can be asked, apart from obviously being asked to explain what we mean by a bottleneck. Uh, Yamco is involved in the processing of sheet metal into products A, B and C using three processes. Uh, pressing, stretching and rolling. So you've got three products and this is as complicated as it's been in the exam. You've got three products and each of them are going through pre um, three processes. First of all we press them. When we've pressed them we then go through and we stretch them and when they've been stretched they then go and they get rolled. Uh, the factory's got 50 production lines each of which has the three processes. Um, raw material uh, for sheet metal is first pressed then stretched and finally rolled. As I was saying it's pressed then it's stretched then it's rolled. Uh, the processing capacity uh, varies for each of the three processes and the factory manager has provided the following data. And you've got that table there, uh, which I'm not going to write the whole table out, you've got it in front of you in the notes. But it gives you the processing time per metre in hours. So without writing it all down, for instance, product A when it's in the pressing department, each meter takes 0.5, takes half an hour, 0.5 hours. Uh, the factory operates for 225,000 hours. Uh, and so each of those processes, pressing, stretching, rolling, are, are working for 225,000 hours. And it says which is the bottleneck process and why is it described as a bottleneck? Uh, well, the second bit you should be able to do from what I've just said. Uh, but identify the bottleneck process. Well, I don't know, if you understood me, you might be able to spot it just by looking at it. But even so, let's do it properly. Pressing. That's one process. And how many of each product are they capable of producing? Well, they've 225,000 hours available. Uh, product A takes half an hour. So with 225,000 hours, divide by half an hour, they could make 450,000 A's. If they went at full speed, that's how many A's they could make. What about product B? Well, again, there are 225,000 hours, each one takes half an hour, so they could make 450,000 units. These are units. Or oh, metres, I beg your pardon, metres. And finally, what about product C? Uh, product C takes 0.4 hours, so with 225,000 hours available, 0.4 hours for each is how many? Uh, 562 500. So that's, remember, that's not how many they're actually going to do of each pro uh, product, because there are other processes, but that's how many units they'd be capable of making uh, of each of the three products. Uh, but each product has to go into stretching. What is the most of each product um, that the stretching department would be capable of making? Uh, well, um, the 225,000 hours, remember. So uh, product A takes 0.25. So 225,000, 0.25 each meter. Oh, what's one more there? 
225,000 hours divided by 0 0.25 and 900,000. So on its own, it'd be capable of doing 900,000 meters. What about B? Uh, 0.4, so 225,000 divided by 0.4, uh, 562,500. And finally, product C, 0.25 again, so 900,000. Now, can I repeat? It doesn't mean they're going to produce 900,000 metres of C, but that's how many they would be capable of producing. We can already see that they can't produce 900,000 metres of C because pressing can only produce 562,500. <coughs> you know, uh, so pressing would slow them down. But anyway, we want to find out what the slowest process is. So what about rolling? In the same way, product A, 0.4, so 225,000 divided by 0.4 is 562,500. We've already done the arithmetic. Product B, 0.25. Well, again, we did the arithmetic, so that's 900,000. Uh, and finally, uh, product C, again 0.25, so again 900,000. Well, that's how many each process will be capable of making each product. But remember, each product has to go through all three processes. And as I said before, whichever is the slowest process is slowing everything down. What about product A? Well, the slowest process is pressing because they can only make 450,000 metres. And so the other two departments, although they could do more, they're not having them arriving. So pressing. What about product B? Surely in the same way, it's pressing that's the slowest. If you're at all unsure, look back to the first bit of this lecture with my little example with tests. And finally, what about C? Well, again, it's 562,500. Oh, sorry, it's pressing that's the slowest. And so although stretching and rolling can go a lot faster, it's pressing that's slowing everything down. It's pressing that's the bottleneck. Uh, now, of course, I said if you uh, 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 were thinking ahead, you could probably have spotted straight away from the original table. Without doing all that arithmetic, if you look at the original table, look at product A, which is the slowest pressing. It takes 0.5 hours a metre, whereas the others, 0 0.25, 0 0.4. Product B, again, it's pressing that's the slowest. They take 0.5 hours, the others, 0 0.4, 0 0.25. And what about product C? Well, again, it's pressing that's the slowest. So in fact, you could have, and this is why it wasn't that many marks in the exam, you could have spotted straight away, it's pressing that's the bottleneck. Why is it the bottlenecks? Well, I think I've said enough, I've said it several times, it's because it's the slowest process. Now that, in fact, oh, it wasn't really many marks, it's not hard, that was probably the messiest bottleneck bit they've had. Now usually, uh, there's only one product involved, if you want any further arithmetic. Uh, because if they did ask you to then uh, do throughput accounting and say, what's the throughput accounting ratio? You calculate it over whatever the slowest process is. You do exactly what we did in the um, previous uh, lectures on throughput. But the process you'd be looking at is the bottleneck, whichever is the slightest. Good.